So let's begin. Uh, so in the context of CJR, uh, most of the disads will, well, all disads usually deal in a change in the political landscape uh, once a plan has been passed, i.e. Uh, when a plan passes, say the abolition of ICE, it will have political ramifications on both the state and national and even the city level. The DISAD's function is to predict what will occur right at that level and weigh it versus the AF. If the disadvantage that will occur on the political level is going to be worse than the impacts that are occurring within the AF, then you probably would vote neg. Uh, another area that the disads can take is the uh, the economic landscape, right? Because we are in a policy realm. This means that money will be spent, money taken and money given in different sectors of the economy. So the only really good way to get access to a lot of the impacts that we traditionally use that go into a like global nuclear war or climate change are through the economy uh, debate. Now, I want to preface that CJR topic is going to be one that is uh, emotionally heavy for a lot of people because this is one of the few times where our expressions uh, as or our viewpoints as an affirmative team can be put forth on issues that we really, really care about. And the irony is when you do that, it changes what the negs can run against you. And some of the stuff that the negs can run against you that are in the gray area or sometimes in the bad area, they will run. And your job is to make sure if you are the negative, that the message that you are using when you're running a disad is one that is not insensitive towards what the affirmative is doing. It is your ground, but that does not mean you should be using it in a way that is offensive towards the affirmative team. Remember, this is a game within, or this is a game, but that doesn't mean that you all are not people within this game that have feelings as well. And once the game is done, especially because we are in an urban debate league, uh, you're going to be seeing those people very, very often. So please, please be respectful when you're employing disadvantages that may seem like you are just rejection of an affirmative team that is a social issue within CJR. So what, uh, what then are disads within this topic? Uh, I did some research uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, there's quite a few. There's actually a lot of disads on this topic. I've just highlighted some of the disads on this topic. So we're in an election year, right? Uh, Trump is on the ballot as well as a ton of city and state elections. This means that those, uh, those are up for debate, right? What happens when Trump gets elected again because of a CJR uh, AF coming through will have ramifications. Uh, the same thing after the elections are over, the elections DA goes away, right? Uh, this is the nature of this ads. They change based on the political and economic landscape. Uh, so after the elections are over, we'll have contested bills that want to be passed and using political capital or changing the, the I guess, the voices of the people, their thoughts, right, will have an effect on whether or not a bill gets passed. Uh, something that you all may also want to think about is something called social advocacy chilling effect, right? Because most of the CJR apps need to be significant to be, uh, need to be significant to be voted upon. It means that they have to have a significant impact within the federal, uh, the federal government as well as just the nation state of the United States of America. It means that it may prevent other reforms from occurring that are also important because people will be like, well, we've already done this. We've, we've probably fixed the problem. So let's not overdo uh, the work and let's not overextend ourselves, right? Uh, something else, right? Because most of the uh, apps are going to deal with a reform 
uh, because it is within the resolution and it is about enacting a law about it. Uh, there's always going to be conservative backlash and we'll just call these backlash DAs. Uh, and the job of the backlash DA is like, look, uh, a lot of conservatives or people on the right are going to have problems with it and they'll enact violence on individuals that may be very problematic uh, towards the people, right? Does it outweigh the F? I don't know, but that's why we have other options in play, right? Uh, the, the conservative backlash uh, goes into the crime and vigilante violence sort of things as well. I think those two are very similar in their regard. They can follow a very similar uh, chain to get the to an impact. Uh, another argument is if the dissad uh, is occurring within, or if the AF is occurring within the Trump presidency, because they all have to be, right, until we pass November or until we pass the elections, every single AF is during the Trump presidency, there is a chance that there is a rollback this said. This is usually going to be done on case, uh, <coughs> which will be some sort of like circumvention argument, right? Because Trump can circumvent a lot of things, even though technically he doesn't have the legal authority in some regards, right? Today, uh, Trump has said that DACA will not accept new applicants, uh, even though that's technically not what the court allowed him to do, right? There is a federalism to say this ad because we are using the federal government. We can actually use uh, a decide about preserving federalism if we combine it with something else, right? Uh, and then the hedge debate, right? If we increase our soft power and increase US hegemony based on us looking like a good nation again, this has ramifications on the international, uh, international world, which will get us into some big stick impacts. I'll explain what big stick impacts are uh, at the later point of this debate, but this is the one that gets us into wars. And something else is something like very, very specific to very, very specific AFs is something like sex trafficking, they said, if you are trying to say legalize prostitution or decriminalize prostitution in the CJR, uh, most of, well, so there is evidence out there that says that this would lead to an increase in sexual violence for individuals who are within that realm, right? So dissats can be generic or they can be really, really specific to an F. Uh, and why this matters is because the topic is bi-directional, right? That means that we can go uh, left or right, we can go liberal or conservative, uh, we can go on restrictions or opening up those restrictions. That means that you need to research the link debate going both ways, right? One of the possible uh, apps out there is the Casey versus Plant Parenthood, which was the law landmark decision case that allowed abortions to come about. You could ease restrictions on abortions even more by overturning Casey. You could also restrict abortions even more by overturning Casey, right? It goes both ways. So if you are going to run uh, a Casey or you're going to cut a dissat for the Casey v. Anthony case, you need to be ready to cut links going both directions. What happens if we increase abortion? What happens if we decrease abortion restrictions, right? Another example is legalization of marijuana or decriminalization of marijuana in a federal level, right? That will have ramifications uh, whether or not we fully make it legal by decriminalizing it or we make it illegal again and punishable by a jail sentence of however many uh, years by your solvency advocate, right? This topic is bi-directional. This means that this ads need to be bi-directional on the link level as well. So I oh, think okay, of a sorry, this ad. Sorry to catch up. Um, I'm not sure if your screen is showing or if you had something up. The screen is not showing? No. Uh, they're showing now. Yep, there you go. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I had an entire thing going on. So yeah, uh, this will be available uh, after. Uh, so I think of the dissed as a ladder, right? If you miss a component within the ladder and the ladder is broken, that means you do not have a complete ladder and a complete argument it means that you should probably not use the decide, right? And it is made of four plus 
uh, layers. The first one is the uniqueness. The second one is the link. And then the internal link, there is an S in parentheses because you can have more than one internal link to get to a really, really, really bad impact that we term it as a terminal impact. Right. So what is uniqueness? I think about it as the world going around and round and round. It is something that is happening in the status quo that we think we feel we need to discuss because it's probably going to be a good thing, right? Uh, the economy being good or bad is a sort of like uniqueness argument, i.e. if the economy is good now, we should probably want to preserve it and make sure that the F doesn't do anything to it because it would lead to some bad things. If federalism is good now, we don't want the have to do something to change the status of federalism, right? If a bill is about to be passed, we don't want an AF to do something that would make it not pass because it would do something else, right? This is basically stating what is happening right now in the world. That's it. It is my plan of, or the plan of the status quo that's occurring right now, i.e. I am giving a lecture, right, on this sets. That is the uniqueness right now. Joseph can interrupt me and say, hold on. Now I am not giving a lecture. What does that do? Well, in this world, I fixed it because now we have a PowerPoint presentation, right? In this case, it was not a this ad. This was helping the AF, which would be seen as a net benefit. Uh, just because uniqueness evidence talks about what is happening right now in the world, the date that the uniqueness evidence is cut and accessed is very, very important, right? If we're talking about uh, the economy, we probably want to talk about the economy within the past like week or so, right? We don't want to be cutting evidence of the economy from say February when the economy was chugging along and everything was going fine, when actually now the economy is very dangerously close to a recession, right? If we're going to make an argument about the economy status, we want to cut it as close to the date of the tournament as possible. Right? The uniqueness evidence needs to always be updated before a tournament. If you don't, it is going to be very adequately clear that you didn't do your research because having a uniqueness evidence from last year concerning the political sphere of the world when COVID was not a thing is going to make it very, very hard to contextualize your decide to anything. Right. So links, uh, this is where a lot of the research uh, from the world, the initial research is going to occur, right? There are three branches within the USFG. This means that you need to find very specific gen or very specific links to AFs, right? They go both directions because this is a bi-directional topic. Uh, you also need to find generic links, i.e. CJR uh, reforms would do this, right? And if you want to be hyper-specific, you want to find links through each portion of the United States federal government's branches, which is the executive, the congressional, as well as the judicial. Uh, so you can use it more advantageously to see whether or not it can function as a net benefit to a counter plan. Right. Uh, the, the example that I use here is right now, uh, weed is legal within Colorado, right? Making it criminalized once more would affect the taxes that are taken away from weed sales. This helps fund things like public schools and other, other public services. Uh, doing that would have a negative effect on Colorado's uh, economy as well and, and make do other things, right? All links should be specific to plan action. If it is not, please don't run to this ad. The internal link, or something I was never really taught about as a novice because our dissets never really had an internal link, chain that was really explained to me in a way that I really got it. So the internal link is basically the part of the ladder that connects the middle part to the top part, right? You're connecting the dots of what happens if this initial action occurs all the way to what is the really, really, really bad thing that will result from it, right? The example that I give here has two internal links because it takes two of those to get to extinction, right? Marijuana sales are currently happening in Colorado and it's a good thing. Uh, Link is decriminalizing marijuana sales would destroy the economy of Colorado because a lot of their economy is teetering because of the recession or the, the economic climate. Uh, the internal link would be Colorado's economy crashing would spill over into the US's economy crashing and 
that's not an impact yet, right? Nothing really, really bad has happened. So we need to do something to get to an actual impact that we can weigh versus enough. Well, the economy crashing would probably lead to global wars based on uh, hegemonic powers trying to use their means to get more resources to fix, quote unquote, their economy. And hegemonic wars currently, because every major uh, nuclear power is a hegemonic force, minus Korea, uh, North Korea specifically, would lead us to a war of extinction. And extinction is the impact of this uh, dissent. Right. The tips that I like to do uh, when I'm cutting a diss ad is I like to keep it as simple as possible. The easier it is to understand the story of the diss ad, the easier it is for the judge to vote on it. If you make your internal link chain story too long, it also gives the F a lot of opportunities to chip away at your diss ad, right? The, it gives them a lot of ground to just like beat it. You don't want to do that. You want to keep it as simple as possible and as robust as possible so the app has less space to really challenge the dissed because there's a lot of ways to beat the dissed uh, because there is a lot of components to the dissed, right? Uh, you should want to have different internal links once you have your initial link so that you can get to different impacts for the dissed. Right. If you have just one core dissad that leads to multiple impacts, you'll always be competitive with an AF because I don't like to use the same impact on the dissad as what the AF is using. Right. If the AF fixes the economy and the neg also fixes the economy, like it gets messy on the link level, it gets messy on the link turn level, it gets messy on the internal link level, and it forces debaters to get really, really good at it. But without a doubt, it's going to get messy in the 2AC and in the block and in the 1AR. And if at all, there's any portion of unclearness, it opens the round for the judge to be confused. And that's the last thing you want when you are doing uh, debate work, right? And lastly, make sure that the authors within the dissad agree with one another because author indicts do occur at this level right, as well as like the counterplan stuff, as well as the case stuff, you always need to make sure your authors generally agree with one another when it comes to uh, their ideas about like things. If you're gonna cut a hedge, a hedge to said, you may want to have the same authors agree that hedge is bad or hedge is good, right, when you're running it, because the last thing you wanna run is have one author say hedge is good, and then another author says hedge is, ba hedge is bad, but from a different article, but you know the ideology of the author, right? And a good debater who's done their research will point that out to the judge, and it's going to be a very fun time for you to not get the belt. So impacts. Uh, these are the things at the dissad that get weighed versus the AF. These are the things that go boom, uh, but only, only sometimes, right? Only sometimes. So there are two types of impacts. We call them big stick impacts, which is on the right on the PowerPoint, and we have the and we have the uh, structural impacts. Uh, I like to term structural impacts that bad things that happen to groups of people, uh, usually on the level of exploitation and oppression, right? Racism, uh, which is prejudice and violence upon a person based on the pigmentation of their skin, sexism, actions that adversely affect female passing individuals. Uh, there is a preface to this, it, should, it can also affect males, we call uh, but it's not really ever spoken about. And also it's kind of like a weird gray territory uh, that a lot of people still argue about. Uh, and as well as like things like poverty, right? The state of being where we lack resources or we have a good quality of life. Those are things that are a result of, ex of exploitation and oppression on a person's uh, being, right? The key word here is being. Big stick impacts culminate into extinction, right? In this world, uh, I've made a uh, copy and paste from a meme on Reddit that talks about uh, multiple extinction scenarios, right? COVID-19 is a pathogen, usually that can lead into an extinction scenario based on normal debate worlds. They can also function as an internal link to a recession because COVID shuts down the economy, uh, as we've seen uh, as a way to resolve a lot of like COVID uh, infections. Right, but recessions can also destroy the world because a terminal impact to recession can be world war, 
Uh, on top of that, recessions can also create war, which make climate change unfixable, because then we're going to utilize tech and destroy tech of other countries that may be able to resolve uh, climate change, but also culminates into extinction. All these three are forms of extinction scenarios, right, that you need to keep track of when you are running an uh, disad. Uh, you can weigh a big sick impact versus a structural AF, but that will require some impact framing arguments that uh, you probably don't want to get into. So I like to stick impacts of a similar nature uh, versus an AF when I am neg, i.e. if the AF is about structural violence, I pick a structural violence neg to said with a different impact within the structural violence so it can be weighed against it, uh, or I pair it up with a counter plan specifically a counter plan so that I can solve more and prevent another structural impact from occurring, right? Uh, so recap, right? The uniqueness is something that is happening uh, within the status quo that we think is a positive thing. The link is what the affirmative is doing to stop it from happening. The internal link is the result of the negative consequence of the affirmation's action and the impact is what that consequence ultimately looks like in a worst case scenario. Uh, so in the one and C, something that we always have to figure out is uh, when do we make the decide? Should we run a decide, right? So one of the first things that I want debaters on my squads to always do is they should time every single card in the disad so that one, they have an idea of what those cards say, and two, so they know how long it takes them to say the cards, so that when they combine the cards to make the full shell, right, it's already, they already know how much time is left over so they can go through other positions. I generally not only do this for the disad, but also the counter plan, the critique, T, and T framework. Right. Um, on the disad level specifically, because the cards are very different from like K uh, literature and K cards, I like to highlight down the cards to the bare minimum of a claim and a warrant, maybe two warrants, because a disad is usually seen as one of the multiple off cases that I can run more than one of without being uh, contradictory to myself, right? Uh, and the place that I stick the disad in the speech is usually after the counter plan because this ads usually function as net benefit to a counter plan. So the storytelling within the one and C is makes it a little bit more clear if you stick it right after a counter plan, right? And my prioritization when I do debate and when I teach debate is the T comes first, right? Then the K comes first then the CP comes first, this ad comes first, and case comes first. Ironically enough, this is usually the same order that judges evaluate the debate, right? The top layer comes first all the way to the bottom layer of the case. That doesn't mean that I only read the this ad and not case uh, arguments. I always try to read case arguments from the very get-go because sometimes you can just win on case arguments, right? Uh, you need to know what your disad says because you are going to be cross-text on it. If you are the one N, you specifically need to know it because the cross-text is going to occur with you in it. Please don't rely on your partner that's going to give the two and C to tell the story of the disad or any other off-case position that you read because it's going to skew speaker points heavily in the favor of the negative, but it's also going to skew the speaker points heavily in the favor of the AF especially if they're maintaining a separation of who is explaining the concepts within the speech acts, right? You never really want to make it spill over unless there is no other option or unless you're fine with it and losing a little bit of speaker points because it seemed like you don't know really what you're reading, right? And sometimes you just don't. And sometimes you need your partner to help you and be like, yo, can I get some help, right? And that's totally fine, right? Just totally fine. Just be careful as to what the ramifications are on your speaker points, right? Uh, another thing that I've been repeating is until you have more experience in debate, if, the, if you are not gonna be running a counter plan and you're just gonna run multiple disads, please make sure that the impact is different from the AF because the link debate and the internal link debate story can be really, really messy and it's going to cause confusion not only for you, but for your opponents as well as the judge and you never want your judge to 
be confused, right? Because the ballot then goes up in the air and you don't ever want to do that. You always want to secure the ballot for yourself. So it's the 2AC. Someone just ran a diss out against you. Uh, what the heck do you do, right? Eh, it's a, whatever. Uh, it's not the time to panic, even if it's a new diss ad, right? It's not the time to panic. It's just another debate argument. It's just another piece of offensive argument versus your AF. You just do what you've always been taught to do. Answer it. Use your AF to answer it, right? Before you even do that, though, you should probably read the diss ad, right, as quick as you can and flow it within the one and uh, flow it within your, uh, your diss ad flow, right? And even during the speech act of the 1NC, you can talk to your partner as to what the heck this decide is saying to make sure you both have an idea of what this decide is within the same point of view. The last thing you ever want to do is answer the decide in one way in a 2AC and have your 1AR answer it in a different way. It is a disconnect and it might even screw up the extension of your answers to the decide where the 2AC is, is okay, the 1AR is brand spanking new, and the 2AR is back to the 2AC. That means that you've functionally dropped the diss ad because the 1AR has extended arguments that are not there and are brand spanking new. And so all the 2AC arguments then become dropped and the 2AR picking it again means you functionally are extending dropped arguments, which is not evaluated after the round, right? Uh, but you always wanna make sure that you are both on the same page so that you can figure out how the this ad relates to the AF and what answers you can make based on what the AF does, right? This, is, this goes to the fourth point about, does the AF have implicit answers towards the this ad? Does it turn it, does it mitigate a good chunk of it? Does it outweigh it, right? If the impact of the this ad is say, a regional uh, economy being destroyed, but but racial violence is worse, right? I'm probably gonna err on the, on the AF, especially if the terminal impact is not worse than what's occurring in the status quo. Uh, I would just vote AF on that regard. So then I would do impact calculus uh, to say that the AF should be preferred, which is one of the things on the right side of this page uh, as to why you should probably win the round as the affirmative, right? Uh, and something to talk about is, how is the impact calc debate going to happen uh, with you and your partner and which ones will you give priority to? So there's a specific format that we like to use uh, for beginners and even advanced people, right? This is what we like to call TULIP. Uh, they are called turns, i.e. an impact turn or a link turn, uh, uniqueness arguments, either uniqueness defensive arguments or uniqueness arguments going the, di uh, the other direction, uh, link defense saying that uh, link defense then impact defense, and prefer my case, which is impact calculus. So TOLIP, get used to it, memorize it, use it all the time. This is something that you're going to be using for the rest of your debate career uh, when you are running a dissed or even answering a dissed, right? Uh, there are two types of turns uh, with a dissed, right? The first one is the impact turn. This is like, saying the impact isn't as bad as you think is actually a good thing, right? Be very, 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 very careful with the impact turn, especially in this topic. If the dissad's impact is about a structural issue, saying that structural violence occurring within that population sector is a good thing, is going to get another team really mad at you and is going to make the judge look at you funny and probably tank your speaker points to oblivion because saying that sexism, racism, or any form of ism uh, or exploitation is good is generally frowned upon and should be frowned upon by the community. If I'm judging you and you say one of these things, you are going to get an auto 20 and probably lose the round from that specific phrase, right? But there are acceptable forms of impact turns within the debate, there are, because this is one that the community has deemed to be acceptable because people win with these arguments. Do I generally agree with it? No, but I will evaluate it as a judge. And the main one that we like to use is climate change, right? The idea that climate change will destroy us all has a lot of evidence going the other way about saying, actually, no, 
climate change is going to resolve the incoming agricultural crisis because of overpopulation within the human race, right? So a climate change would save the human race from going extinct through resource wars. Uh, and we don't want that. So the impact turn would be, look, climate change is good because we're about to die from extinction because of resource wars. You should prefer the AF in that regard because we help climate change to occur. You've impact turned the dissed. Uh, be very, very careful. Ask your coach, ask your teammates, can I impact turn this position? If their answer is no, please don't force the impact turn because it's only going to lead into some really bad things. Uh, oh, I didn't, okay, whatever. Uh, so the other uh, turn is called a link turn, saying that the AF resolves the impacts of the dissed, right? And this is why I don't like to use the same sort of impacts for the AF and the NEG. Uh, if the impact of the NEG is racism and the impact of the AF is also racism, if the AF solves some of the impacts of the NEG, uh, I think then I would vote F. Right, because it's saying that the actions of the AF would resolve the impacts of the NEG. I can do your stuff within my plan. And the abolish ICE probably resolves some racism. So if you run a diss ad with, with racism as your impact as well, I'm going to probably want to err on the side of the AF. Right. Uh, the U part of Tulips deals with the uniqueness. There are two ways to respond. The first is saying the exact opposite of what the uh, negative team said, right? If the argument from the negative is that federalism is high now, the ass response would be actually no, because Trump's actions have wrecked federalism by imposing federal authority within natural state uh, powers, right? Now you've created clash on the uniqueness level that go on different directions. And this is really, really good. The newer the evidence is, remember, newer the evidence is, and the more contextualized it is, and the better the reasonings will win you rounds on the uniqueness level. The other argument that you can say is, uh, it's not as bad as you think, right? Uh, because there are checks and balances within it, right? Even if Trump does wreck federalism, one, uh, it's there is still enough being preserved and use the example of say like the Supreme Court DACA case where it changed where it made sure that Trump did not right uh, make dreamers unlawful right that was a preservation of federalism uh, another example is the uh, the economy debate right if the F's or if the next argument is the economy is on the brink of recession the neg can always say it's not that bad. The economy is very, very uh, versatile, as COVID has proved. It tanked really quickly, but the smart stock market is as good as it's ever been right now. And if you were to look at the New York Stock Exchange, it would probably be generally be true. Uh, the last uniqueness argument is a weird one, and one that I like to explain uh, almost in an analogy. And, yeah. Well, we'll figure it out. So it's called uniqueness overwhelms the link, i.e., look, the economy is going to be great, period. There is nothing that we can do to make it bad, right? Even if you think your link evidence is true, that's not true because there is such an overwhelming advantage uh, that there is no way it would ever happen. The example I use here is the elections dissed, right, saying that Biden is locked in to win 2020, uh, and doing the AF would reverse that and allow Trump to win. The uniqueness overwhelms the link argument would be Trump has zero chance of winning the election regardless of any policy action. And I would warrant that out by the many, uh, the many polls that are used that have indicated the points are too high to be changed, as well as the fact that the lying within the Trump administration has soured it to the point where even the positive news about Trump is seen as something to be wary about, right? I would have to use examples to prove that uniqueness overwhelms the link. If I don't use examples, I'm not going to be as convincing to the judge. Uh, the L part of Tulips is called link defense, right? Uh, this is just saying the plan doesn't link to the uh, 
to the this ad. Uh, that's it. It's very basic, right? The economy is doing amazing now. The link is the AFS action would deck the economy doing some bad things. The AFS argument is, nope, not us, right? And it's something that you should always say because it forces the block to actually engage and re-explain the link evidence some more, right? It changes the time skew quite a bit. Uh, and if they don't uh, answer this, then you have a random free answer uh, in the 2AC that you can extend in the 1AR and really use it to your advantage, right? Uh, and yeah, saying no link or our AF has nothing to do with this and actually have a card for it is a very convincing argument, but by itself does not win you around unless it is something we like to call terminal defense, i.e. 100% takeouts. Uh, impact defense, uh, i.e. nukes don't actually go boom, boom, right? Uh, safeguard and nukes might actually fix uh, safeguards and nukes uh, with the new technology uh, may deem that they don't actually culminate in an explosion in an event of an accidental launch, right? Uh, climate change is fake uh, because Fox News says so is a form of impact defense for climate change, right? Genocide is a is a lie propagated by the left is impact defense. Please never run this argument, right? Uh, because uh, it makes you look really, really bad. Uh, sexism is made up, right? Men experience sexual oppression, oppression too. There are cards for that. Again, be really careful when we're playing with impacts uh, uh, within the debate space, right? The Holocaust is a lie is another form of defense, right? Uh, but a, an acceptable one is regional wars will not spill over and using historical context to explain it, right? I.e., will the war with uh, Yemen expand to war with the Chinese, war with Thailand or any other like nation, right? Will it spill over to other regions? The answer is generally no, uh, unless we get like World War III. Uh, prefer the case. I think this is my favorite portion of the 2AC when it comes to answering the dissad. Uh, this is the beginning of the impact calc debate. And this is something that should always be within the uh, 2AC because it really shows the judge that you know what you're talking about, right? And it shows that you know what the AFS offense is versus the dissad on the impact level, right? And this is done in uh, several ways. Uh, two of the examples I give here as to why you should prefer the case is uh, uh, so we're going to be focusing on the war between China and the US of the AF and war war in space with the next space wars, right? This is usually just a hedge in space. Uh, and these are the examples on the prefer the case that I'll be using in the next slide. So impact calc has to deal with uh, probability, time frame, and magnitude. Probability is how likely is the impact of the AF versus the impact of the neg when you compare it, right? War between China and the US could happen at any second. It would just create a, you would just need a trigger. But a space race that can culminate into a space war would take quite a bit of time because we don't even have the technology to have multiple nations be in space to create scenarios of war, right? Which one is more probable? Which one is more probable, right? If countries don't have the capabilities to go into space, then it is less likely that they will be able to actually create a space war. In that regard too, uh, this leads into time frame, right? Which is much faster to enact. Uh, a China-US war would be very, very fast, whereas a space war would be very, 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 very slow. And magnitude, uh, in this regard, they both suck. Uh, so in this, in this day and age, uh, when it comes to impacts, you're, when we're dealing with magnitude, you generally want to focus on the effects of the impact, how bad it will be in comparison to the other. If both impacts culminate in extinction and the end of the world, uh, we generally don't do the magnitude uh, comparison. We probably do the probability and time frame. Uh, so we've done the impact calc in the 2AC. We've done the tulips. It's the block. What do we do now? Well, you're the block and you have a shell. And your job is to always extend that shell, 
right? Always, if you don't extend that shell and there's a missing portion of that shell, the likelihood of you getting the ballot from the judge is very, very low. So the first thing you should always do is extend your uniqueness evidence, right? Using your author and your claim and your warrant. Please, 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 please do not reread the tag. I could care less about what the tag of the argument is. I want you to explain to me what the evidence is saying. If the economy is robust now, why is it robust? What is the evidence saying to you in your own words? Same thing within the link evidence. I want you to use the author, the claim, and the warrant, right? And you can use the specific uh, wording, extend the uniqueness evidence uh, by, by someone, right? Or extend the link evidence by this and blah, 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 blah. Uh, this is important because some judges don't flow the word uniqueness. Some judges don't flow the word link. Some judges don't flow the word impact. We just flow your authors and your warrants or your authors and your main claim uh, and maybe some of your warrants. And that's how we flow. And so you need to make sure that you follow the same structuring of the one and C as well, right? The last thing you wanna do is lead from the impact and then go to the uniqueness and then go to your link. You've just messed up the order of the flow of the one and C in regards to your decide, making the debate quite a little bit unclear. The example that I gave uh, here is, uh, is an overview that has an extension of the shell of the one and C, right? Uh, saying that we win this debate because the impact of the decide outweighs in turns case, i.e. Uh, you should prefer the, uh, the impact of the F or neg is bigger and the action of the impact occurring while the plan is trying to fix means that it would never be able to fix the impacts of the F. Uh, Trump is going to lose the election now. It's Galveston in 20. The plan would revitalize the middle class to vote for him. Uh, again, this is Broby in 18. And this leads to another Trump presidency, which will culminate in an executive use of Space Force and then war with other nations, right? I've extended the story of the decide as well as told the judge why the decide should be winning from the very get-go of the decide flow. And this is generally what you want to do so that the judge has a really clear picture of what your off case position looks like. Then you can go into the line by line debate and actually contest the two AC answers using the evidence, right? Of using the evidence that you had in the one and C or reading more extensions to it that answer it as well as really hammering down the impact calculus, especially when you get to the impact evidence, right? Uh, so I put, a very specific terminology in the example called the decide turns the case. This is just like, look, the AF is trying to fix a really, really bad problem. If the decide triggers and something bad is occurring because of the AF's action, what does that do when the AF is trying to fix the impact that's occurring? Will it be able to do so? And if the answer is no, it does not fix then it means that the decide functionally turns the case and doesn't allow the case to solve itself, right? You think you resolve US-China tensions, but the space race would create tensions with China because China is a hegemonic power that would provoke the country, uh, thereby preventing the AF from solving their actual impact, which turns the case. Congrats, now the case can't functionally be weighed against the decide because the case doesn't solve itself, right? And the decide at ways is just more impact calculus, but instead of coming from the AF, it's coming from the neg. How probable is the space race compared to a US-China war? Which one is faster and which one is bigger? So we're not always gonna go for the decide. We're just not gonna uh, because Sometimes you don't wanna go for it in the block. Sometimes you wanna go for the K or sometimes they've conceded uh, the T debate and a good chunk of the case debate that you've really just won, right? So what happens if you don't wanna go for the dissed, even especially if you have two dissed to two counter plans and you should only go for one of them in the block? Well, this is really where it gets really gray because there's correct ways and incorrect ways to drop positions on a dissed level, right? Uh, the first way that I like to do is I can see the impact. Uh, this is also why I like to not like use the same impact of the AF on the neg is so that if I drop the impact, I don't 
do weird things in relation to the F and say, oh, if I don't cause a, you know, if the F doesn't cause this, but it prevents it, oops, right? Now you've just magnified the story of the F. Uh, and I, so I would just concede, yeah, okay, the space, the space wars would never happen. Technology is just too new, right? Done. Uh, you can concede the link, saying the no link argument that's part of the tulips, right? Link defense. Uh, you can concede it if there is not a link turn to the disad. If they don't have a link turn to the disad, you can go ahead and concede it. But if there is a link turn, you need to answer the uniqueness question, right? And you need to make sure you win the uniqueness question uh, or else it gets really, really fuzzy. Uh, but if you don't ever want to deal with that, just concede the impact and say that, look, actually your impact defense is true, done. And we don't even have to look at it and then we'll just move on. So this ad should generally not be run alone because there's a lot of opportunities for you to lose if it's just run alone, unless it overwhelmingly outweighs the F. Uh, we generally like to pair it with a kind of plan, right? Uh, and it functions as something that we like to call a net benefit. I hope Leia covered it uh, in case she didn't, or in case you all want a reminder of what a net benefit is, is what action does the F do that the kennel plan doesn't do that would trigger the disad, right? I like to use the example of a plan of going to Denny's, a counter plan of going to the farmer's market, and a disad of uh, health. Right, Denny's has very unhealthy food, even their salads are unhealthy because of the amount of salt they put in them as well as some of the dressings that they have. And I'm not about to go to Denny's if, I can't, if, I can, if I'm only eating a salad. So I'm gonna always get something else and they're high in calories and high in salt and high in saturated fat. So it is very, very unhealthy for me. But the farmer's market has options that are very healthy for me, right? That won't increase my chance of diabetes or that won't make me feel bloated and and like constipated or sleepy from like a carb overload, right? Then that benefit in the disad is health, right? Diabetes or uh, D Denny's leads me to, to leading a lifestyle that is unhealthy where the farmer's market does not, right? The counter plan of the farmer's market would be preferred because it avoids the unhealthy uh, portions that I want to not deal with, right? So the disad then becomes a net benefit to the farmer's market. Right. Another example uh, would be the executive branch should disband ICE because ICE is a portion of the executive branch. The executive authority has the ability to abolish it. Now, the negative can also overturn a case that would functionally make ICE unconstitutional because it violates whatever amendment in the constitution. Right. The net benefit, elections. Trump wouldn't get any sort of credit for we're disbanding ICE if it was done through the courts, right? Because the courts are usually seen as apolitical. So the AF would lead to, uh, to the dissed, right? But the NEG would not, right? And so this is uh, why we always run a dissed to a counter plan. So the counter plan is stronger, right? And so we can really clear and we can articulate a reason why we should always go for the dissent with a counter plan. Uh, so the 1AR, my favorite speech, uh, it was a, mostly a 1AR for most of my debate. It's basically passing the baton from the 2AC to the uh, 1AR. Uh, and this is done very, very, I have a very methodical manner. There are certain ways that some teams prefer it. Uh, my teams, you know, uh, this is the way I teach my teams. So the first thing I look at during the 1AR prep uh, is did the AF concede a uniqueness argument or any portions of tulips? Did they mishandle some of the turn arguments that was made by the 2AC, right? And I want to exploit that. I always want to exploit that. And there's a very specific way I like to use 1AR extensions, not just for the disad, but in every other flow uh, within this debate. The first one that I like to use, and the, really the only argument that I use is this: the 2AC uh, little a or little b or little c or big a or big b or big c uh, was great. It says that this argument here with a claim and this warrant, right, 
and that has restated the argument. Then you want to connect it to the negative argument, and then you would say, and perform my argument because. Right? This is called the four-step refutation. It is one of the basic arguments or argumentative styles of refu refuting and debate, and something that we always use. Right? And if you are in the 1AR, uh, you kind of want to avoid uh, going for reading more and more cards because you only have a limited time. So only really read new cards if the AF or if the NEG reads a uh, new impact to the this ad, right? But, but even before that, if the AF can still weigh and outweigh it, I would still uh, prefer you to not read cards, right? So it's a 2 and R. It's time for you to fly. It's time for you to shine. Uh, the first thing you should always do, just like in the twin C, is give an overview as to why you've won the round because of the decide, right? Is it because of the decide turns case, making the case not happen if not be able to resolve its impacts if it were to to trigger the decide? Uh, is it because it outweighs the F on probability magnitude of time frame? Uh, does this side still function as a net benefit to the counter plan post to one AR? If it does, then totally go for the counter plan and the decide, especially if the counter plan uh, permutation arguments from the 2AC does not resolve the disad, i.e. does the disad still link to the permutation, right? And just because of the 2NR doesn't mean that you shouldn't extend your shell. You should always still extend your shell uh, because you are trying to just make sure that the main arguments from your previous flow are extended through the 2NR, right? And make sure that you contextualize how those sorts of things function with the AFS 1AR. You always want to start contextualizing and finish the contextualizing and really fleshing out what the story is of the of the decide at that point, right? Don't forget the impact calculus and turns case arguments. It's in the overview, but when you get to it on the line by line, you want to be very explicit and really talk about this, right? And the last thing, uh, and which is very underutilized by the 2NR that I've seen in a lot of debates, is they should preempt 2AR things, right? They're going to go up here and say this, but don't believe them because my previous point still is true, right? You want to preempt it so it makes a judge when they do get up and say the thing, uh, you know, the judge will be like, no, they've already preempted this. You still lose this point, right? And that's it. Uh, so there are some questions on the uh, chat. Uh, so the first one I think was from Michael. Uh, it says like, how long should the disad extensions uh, uh, usually be in the 2NC and 1NR. Uh, I think extensions, uh, the shell extension itself should be about 30 seconds to 20 seconds long. Uh, that's it, right? Uh, for the, yeah, for the 2NC, 1NR, it shouldn't be too long. I think that the said debate can be even finished in two to three minutes uh, because it is one of the smaller parts of the debate that can really, really blow up. It's up to you, right? If this set and the counter plan are going to be your main off-case strategy, uh, then you may even want to blow it up for the entirety of the 2NC where half of it is going to be dedicated to the this set, half of it of the 2NC is going to be dedicated to the counter plan and the 1NR is going to be dedicated to the case debate. Uh, Lena had a question about what is a link turn to the disad. The link turn is functionally, can the AF uh, do the disads or fix the disads uh, impacts, right? Can the AF resolve the space wars, right? If the AF solves tension between US and China, China won't want to be involved in space wars with us. And they're one of two countries that is not the US that can get to space effectively. Right, that is a link turn. Uh, another one was, would it be a good idea to just have case outweighs non-unique some link turn arguments and two AC so the net can't kick out of it later on in the debate? I don't generally like to do something called straight turning a decide. I always want to give the neg an option to to be able to kick out because, especially, yeah, I always want that option because if you're not truly confident in just doing the work. Uh, then I would be fine with it, right? I like to diversify with different pieces of offense and defense, so it really just flushes out the things. Like them kicking the this side is great, right? That means you can focus your attention to more things, right? Uh, if there are no more questions, uh, thank you all for showing up to this lecture and I will see you all later and hopefully in future tournaments if you are in the Lambdals circuit.